All right, let's get started. We're gonna look at lesson 10 today, States of Matter. So get out your study guides and uh, let's take a look at States of Matter. All right, you should have your lesson 10 out. Turn to states of matter there in your study guide. All right, first of all, in this class, we are only gonna focus on three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. All right, to begin with, I want to discuss uh, some basic definitions that uh, are associated with states of matter. Uh, the gases, solids, and liquids. Um, first of all, melting. Um, I think most of you know that melting is when a solid, uh, we go from a solid to a liquid, phase change. Freezing is from a liquid to a solid, phase change. Uh, vaporization, um, which is also evaporation, goes from a liquid to a gas change. And so you can use evaporation um, instead of vaporization, you can use both. Okay. Some other definitions, uh, condensation uh, is going from a gas to liquid state. Um, sublimation is from a solid to gas phase change and deposition is from a gas to a solid state. So the last two, sublimation, we bypass the liquid state altogether and it just goes from solid to a gas. A good example of that would be like uh, dry ice. Dry ice is made up of solid carbon dioxide. And so when it's left at room temperature, uh, solid carbon dioxide or dry ice it immediately uh, sublimes into uh, the gas phase of carbon dioxide, all right? Uh, deposition is not as is is really as in common, and we don't really come across that much in this class, so we won't focus on it too too much. Okay. All right. Now, uh, what I want to do here is all all we're going to do is kind of more of a brief look at uh, the three states of matter. We are going to actually do an entire unit that's gonna focus on uh, the states of matter, uh, solids, liquids, and gases. So this is just to give you a, a real brief uh, overlook of some things. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a particle diagram or a particle model of the three states of matter. So since you cannot see uh, the particles um, of a solid or liquid or gas with your eyes, we're gonna just naturally draw um, a model, particle model. So um, you can think of a solid, is the particles in the solid are tightly compact, okay? They're very, very compact with one another, which is why we get these solid crystal structures um, being formed here. And I'm just drawing some particles. These circles are representing the particles in the solid state, okay? Now, I wanna describe a, a few things, so write this down in your notes, is that uh, even though the particles are tightly packed in the solid state, uh, these particles do have some motion, some vibrational motion. So that you can think of these particles are kind of like moving in vibrations up and down, uh, very close to one another. So these particles do have energy that allows for those uh, vibrations or up and down motion of those particles, okay? But even so, they're essentially in fairly fixed positions, all right? Those particles, other than those little vibrational motions, there's not a whole lot of movement that we see with those particles. And that's really important in the solid state. They just don't have a lot of freedom to move around, okay? 
Now we contrast this with the liquid state. In the liquid state, the particles begin to absorb more energy, all right? And that energy is what that's gonna do, is gonna start taking those particles that were kind of in those fixed positions, and we're gonna start freeing them up so they have a little bit of fluid movement, a little bit more motion, and they can kind of move around and slide past one another a little bit. So in other words, in the liquid state, there's more freedom of particle movement, movement from one around each other, okay? So we often could draw that like this. We can take some particles, and they're gonna be a little bit more separated from one another, and they're actually going to have more motion, and these arrows are gonna represent their movement a little bit more. So just, just a little bit more freedom to slide past one another. And that's because they have more energy, all right? Now, um, as we add even more energy to the liquid state, then we begin to start forming a gas. So what's happening at the particle level with gas particles is that not only do they move, but they have great freedom of movement. They are really far away from one another and they can move all around. They don't have much of any contact with one another at all. They're just completely free. So we represent this by complete freedom of movement or motion, okay? No real interaction whatsoever, okay? So again, I wanna just go back and summarize. In the solid state, the particles are tightly packed with some vibrational motion or movement, but they're pretty much in a fixed position. As they absorb more energy, those particles become further apart and they're able to have more freedom of movement around one another in this regards, but they're still, they're still kind of in a, in a, in a, a certain shape that they, they, they make. But it's not until they gain so much energy in the gas state that they are so separated from one another that they have complete 100% freedom of motion and movement from each individual particle in that um, container and that, that uh, object, okay? And I, I hope that this makes sense. Now, the, the last little bit to this is to understand this important concept, and that is when they have, um, when, when a, they're in the solid state, these particles are in the solid state. The reason why they're really compact and really close to each other is because there are some forces, attractive forces, all right? And we're gonna study these forces in a greater detail later on, but for now, just give you an idea. There's some attractive forces between these particles. And in the solid state, those attractive the attractive forces are really strong. And so it kind of keeps them so close to each other without any real degree of movement at all, okay? But when they gain more energy, those attractive forces become weakened, okay? So as these particles gain more energy, the attractive forces weaken, and that pulls the particles further apart allowing them now to have that more fluid motion that we see in the liquid state from one another, okay? A lot less attraction going on. And as we gain more and more energy, that attraction diminishes greatly. And finally, when we're in the gas state, the particles are so unattractive, they do not like each other, they will be completely free from one another and therefore they have free um, to move wherever they want to go, okay? So this interaction of forces and energy um, is super critical to understand uh, ma uh, matter in its gas, liquid, and solid states, okay? So please uh, get the basics of this down now. Um, it will help us greatly um, in, in later uh, units as we, as we explore more about gases, solids, and liquids, okay? So um, that is it for right now. 
uh, for uh, the states that matter until later on, okay? So study hard, uh, learn these particle models, learn how these particles are interacting with one another, um, how energy and these forces of attraction are related to one another in the solid, liquid, and gas state. Okay, that's it for today. Um, have a good rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you later.